I'm going to talk about the urethra, which is the terminal, terminal exit point of urine. Okay, so in front of you are the two elementary drawings. A, a drawing of male bladder with the male urethra and a drawing of female bladder with the female urethra. We have covered all this in our previous talks. Uh, we'll be focusing over this part, which is the extension, downward extension of the neck of bladder. I will describe the male urethra first. This is the, the region of the internal urethral sphincter, which is we just talked about is made up of the slings of smooth muscles wrapped around this point or you know this orifice. They are under the control of autonomic nervous system. They are not voluntary, okay? So they will relax when the detrusive muscle will contract to allow the urine to trickle down into the urethra. In case of male, the neck of the bladder is being surrounded by, it's like if it, this is the neck of the bladder, it's being surrounded by a collar-like gland, or like it's actually a chestnut-shaped gland, which is surrounding the, the neck of the bladder like a collar. Okay, that's known as prostate gland. So we have divided, the, the surgeons and the physicians, they have divided the urethra into four parts in males because it's a very long tube and narrow, okay? So the, the part which is traversing through the prostate is the prosthetic part of urethra or the first part of the urethra. Then the part which exits the prostate, prostate and enters this urogenital diaphragm or the membrane, they call it the membranous part of the urethra. Okay, then there is the bulb of penis or the root of penis. So this is the bulbar part of the urethra. And then the, the shaft of penis is, the, is having the spongy urethra or the penile urethra, okay? And here is the, at the tip is the urethral, external urethral meatus. It's also known as, like up here is the navicular fossa or fossa navica, navicularis. That is like a, you know, uh, like a river. It's like, uh, it's, it allows the trickling down of urine out of the urethra. I will say it again. The first part of urethra is prostatic urethra. Then the second part is the membranous urethra. Then the bulbar urethra related to the bulbs of penis. And then spongy urethra or the penile urethra that terminates at the external urethral meatus. Okay, meatus is an opening. So in general, the, the length, the entire length of the male urethra is from 18 to 20 centimeters. And you can see how long it is. The radiologist, they have labeled the prostatic part and the membranous part of the male urethra as the posterior urethra. And you'll come across to see this term and you'll come across to listen to this term again and again in your radi radiology postings. The posterior urethra means the prostatic part and the membranous part. And most of the times, this is the part of urethra that is liable to get damaged. It's likely, it's most likely to get damaged in manhole injuries and in other fall injuries. You know, when the when a boy or uh, has hit uh, the ground or a surface or a cover, a hard cover, or he he's just uh, bumped over the road and uh, from the the seat of the bicycle he, he he landed his perennial region has landed over the crossbar of the uh, uh, bicycle he can get this posterior urethra ruptured. Okay, that is a serious condition because the urine will be trickling out and it will be, you know, trickling down and getting collected into the subcutaneous tissue or the superficial perineal pouch, like in the penis, uh, the tissue of the penis and also in the scrotal region. And it's an emergency and it's a very painful condition. Okay, 
So here in front of you is the female urethra and you can compare it. So in contrast to the male urethra, the female urethra is very small and dilated tube. Okay, if you compare 18 to 20 centimeters of length with the three to four centimeters length of female urethra, there is no match, okay? The female urethra, it opens up like a small opening, an orifice in front of the vagina. So if this is the vestibule that has been guarded by the labia minora on each side, in the vestibule, the posterior opening is the vagina and the anterior opening is the is is the urethra okay so and there are more chances of uh, damage uh, of female urethra in case of like uh, you know there are many many occasions when that can get can get that get damaged like in normal vaginal deliveries in case of uh, coitus in case of many other like catheterization I'll be talking about it so look at the anatomy the, uh, this orange color structure, by the way, is the urogenital diaphragm in boats, okay? I will be talking about it in a minute. Uh, the, uh, just like the male, the internal urethral sphincter uh, in the female urethra is also guarded by the band of smooth muscle, which is involuntary in control. It's like sympathetic parasympathetic system, which are governing uh, the uh, contraction of the muscle. Then the, there is a short tube of three to four centimeters, and that, that opens up into the vaginal vestibule. The external urethral sphincter in females, as you can see, although it is there, but it is partially present. It's partially, like it's covering the, the urethra mostly from front. Because at behind, it's the vagina. So the female urethra is, like the wall of the female urethra is, is, in, is blending in with the wall of vagina. So the external urethral sphincter in females is not very well developed. As compared to male, you can see over here, it's a very strong muscle. And I, fo I forgot to mention that the external urethral sphincter is under voluntary control because it, it is made up of skeletal muscles and they are innervated by the pudendal nerve, okay? Here, the external urethral sphincter is a scanty and this explains why females are more likely to develop incontinence, stress incontinence as compared to males. Because when the bladder is full and it's crossing its limit, and there is, you know, there, there is usually an angulation between the neck of the bladder and the urethra that is acting like a sphincter in females. Once that, uh, you know, that angle, instead of like this, it's, it's been, you know, broadened up as a result of expansion of the bladder or distension of the bladder, this angle get, got, it, it gets broadened up, okay? That will lead to stress incontinence in females and especially when they, like after a one or two uh, normal vaginal deliveries, the females are more likely to develop a stress incontinence. They cannot hold back the urine for longer times as compared to males. And also, I, I was mentioning in the beginning that there are many chances of, uh, you know, uh, damage of female urethra, not accidentally, but like, like as a physical accident. Actually, in, during the surgeries, sometimes they get dam the, 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 the urethra gets damaged because they're in the, in the process of catheterization because it's a small tube. It's not that extended and, you know, it's closely uh, uh, related to the vagina. So it, it has a tendency to get, you know, the anterior wall gets uh, damaged frequently in females. Okay. While in males, there are more chances of rupture of the urethra, leakage of the urine, as I explained to you in, you know, as, you know, accidents and also obstruction of the urethra in males is way more common than in females. And in, in females, almost always there is no obstruction unless and until there is a tumor.
But in males, there is a gland, you know, uh, surrounding the urethra, just like a collar that is prostate gland. So in most of the times in elderly men, there is a condition which is not non-cancerous. It's known as benign prostatic hyperplasia in that the prostatic tissue hyper, you know, it, it, it increases in size. And that's how it, you know, compresses, just squeezes the prosthetic part of the urethra. And the person suffers from the obstruction and there would be retention of urine inside the bladder, okay? Which is not the case in females.